start recording right now. Um, and um, the way I'd like to run the conference, and I think works best well for us last time, if you look on your uh, meeting control panel, you'll see a bubble on the right-hand side. That's for uh, chatting. And uh, last time, uh, questions were entered into the chat. Uh, I think it worked well for everybody. We'd like you to hold the questions until the end, and so I'll come on and, and, and open them up. So uh, with that, uh, Tony, I'm going to transfer over to you, and uh, I'm good to go when you are. Okay, Dick, thank you. I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this uh, review of District 7910 Youth Protection Policy. Everything sound okay, Dick? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. First, I want to thank a lot of people that helped me put this together, starting with District Governor Karen Gaffney, District Youth Chair Diana Nostrova, District Youth Exchange Chair Marsha Davis, and certainly technology assistance from Dick Anderson. Okay, Dick, we can start. This protection policy does not include the Essex program, which complies uh, fully with the United States government, broader international, and Essex rules and regulations. This, uh, this, the, the Essex program I'm talking about here is the one where students, foreign exchange students, are sent across the country or into this country, which has a much stricter policy than one, the one we're presenting here. Okay, Dick. And when we talk about youth protection policy, uh, I think it's important to understand the conduct that needs to be kept by the adults who are in charge of the youth un in, in, our, in our midst. District 7910 strives to create a safe environment for all youth who participate in rotary activities. To the best of their ability, Rotarians, Rotarian spouses and partners and other volunteers must safeguard the children and young people they come into contact with and protect them from physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. And we're talking about here youth who are under the age of 18. Okay, Dick. Talk about definitions and specifically, a volunteer is any adult involved with a rotary youth activity who interacts directly with youth, whether supervised or, more importantly, unsupervised. And a youth program participant is anyone who participates in a Rotary Youth program, whether a child or an adult. Okay, Dick. Club compliance. The district governor is responsible for supervision and control of all youth activities in the district. District 7910 will monitor all participating clubs and ensure that they comply with youth protection certification requirements. And this is a very strong statement because this is, it, this is, it really serves two purposes. One is to protect the youth, obviously, but secondly, to educate any parent or any uh, guardian of a youth who's participating with us to ensure with them that any of our volunteers who are working with youth have been properly um, educated on all of the rules and regulations about youth protection and so forth. So that's an important uh, thing to keep in mind for those that are non-Rotarians who are sending their children to our activities. Okay, next. Whenever we uh, select and screen volunteers, there's some things you need to think about. All Rotarian and non-Rotarian volunteers interested in working with youth program participants must be Rotary International and district eligibility requirements. And we're going to go over those during this program. Rotary International prohibits the membership and participation of any volunteer who has admitted to, been convicted of, or otherwise been found to have engaged in sexual abuse or harassment. Next. If a person is accused of sexual abuse or harassment and the law enforcement investigation is inconclusive, 
or if law enforcement declines to investigate, additional safeguards are necessary to protect any youth participants with whom the accused may have future contact as well as the accused. A person later cleared of charges may apply to be reinstated as a youth program volunteer. However, reinstatement is not a right, and reinstatement to his or her former position is not necessarily guaranteed. Next. Next. Training. And that's what we're talking about today. We're really talking about training and raising awareness of youth protection and the full circle of uh, information it involves. District 7910 and member clubs may provide youth protection training, which is what we're talking about today, and information on youth programs. And myself, the district youth protection officer, will oversee the training sessions. Okay? Yeah, hang on a second. Mm -hmm. What's this? Let's talk Let's about in the event and the an, an incident occurs. Allegation handling and follow through. District 7910 takes all allegations of abuse or harassment seriously and shall handle them in accordance with Rotary International reporting guidelines. And those will follow later on in this presentation. The district will cooperate with all law enforcement agencies, child protection services, and legal investigations and will not interfere with official investigations when conducting its own independent review. District 7910 will appoint a youth protection officer, myself, to evaluate and review files, policies, and allegations regularly. Again, this is a strong statement to notify our own members, but also non-members, that we will cooperate with all agencies involved if there are any allegations that surface with children involved in our programs. Okay. Now the Rotary International Reporting Guidelines. All allegations of abuse or harassment will be taken seriously and must be handled within the following guidelines. The safety and well-being of young people must always be the first priority. Next. Again, definitions. What is sexual abuse? Sexual abuse is engaging in implicit or explicit sexual acts with a young person or forcing or encouraging a young person to engage in implicit or explicit sexual acts alone or with another person of any age or of the same or opposite sex. Sexual harassment is sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. In some instances, sexual harassment precedes sexual abuse and is used by sexual predators to desensitize or groom their victims. Next. Oops. Thank you, Dick. Sorry. Uh, uh, next slide. There we go. There you go. Some examples of sexual harassment include sexual epithets, jokes, written or spoken references to sexual conduct, talking about one's sex life in the presence of a young person, or comments about an individual's sexual activity or prowess, verbal abuse of a sexual nature, display of sexually suggestive objects, pictures, or drawings. And now this opens up a whole new thing with uh, smartphones and all of that, and those kinds of displays. Sexual leering or whistling, any inappropriate physical contact, such as brushing or touching, obscene language or gestures, and suggestive or insulting comments. Next. Um, here we go. Who should determine if it is abuse or harassment? Upon hearing allegations, adults should not determine whether the alleged conduct constitutes 
sexual abuse or sexual harassment. Instead, after ensuring the safety of the student, the adult should immediately report all allegations to the appropriate child protection or law enforcement authorities. And in some countries, this reporting is required by law. Okay, Dick. Now, how do you report that allegation? Any adult to whom a Rotary Youth Program participant reports an allegation of sexual abuse or harassment must follow these reporting guidelines. And once again, these are from Rotary International. Number one, receive the report. A, listen attentively and stay calm. Acknowledge that it takes a lot of courage to report abuse or harassment. Be encouraging. Do not express shock, horror, or disbelief. B, assure privacy, but not confidentiality. There's a difference. Explain that you will have to tell someone about the abuse, harassment, in order to make it stop, and to ensure that it doesn't happen to others. Next. C. Get the facts, but don't interrogate. Ask questions that establish facts. Who, what, when, where, and how. Reassure the young person that he or she did the right thing in telling you. Avoid why questions, which may be interpreted as questioning the young person's motives. Remember that your responsibility is to present the story to the proper authorities. D, be non-judgmental and reassure. Avoid criticizing anything that has happened or anyone who may be involved. It's especially important not to blame or criticize the young person. Emphasize that the situation was not his or her fault and that it was brave and mature to come to you. Next. E, document the allegation. Make a written record of the conversation. Include the date, the time, as soon as you can, right after the report. Number two, protect the young person. Ensure the safety and well-being of the youth program participant by removing him or her from the situation immediately and preventing all contact from the alleged abuser or harasser. Next. Number three, now report the allegations to appropriate authorities, child protection or law enforcement. Immediately report all cases of sexual abuse or harassment, first to the appropriate law enforcement authorities and then to the club and district leadership for follow through In District 7910, the appropriate law enforcement office is the local police department. In most situations, the first Rotary contact is the lead person from the Rotary Club sponsoring the event, who is responsible for seeking the advice of appropriate agencies and interacting with them. If the allegation involves this Rotarian, the district youth program chair or district governor should be the first Rotary contact. District 7910, again, will cooperate with police or legal investigations. Next. District 7910 has researched local, state, and national laws related to sexual abuse and harassment prevention and notes the following legal requirements of which all adult volunteers participating in the program must be aware. It is expected that all Rotary Clubs in District 7910 that engage in activities involving young people under 18 years of age would have their adult volunteers properly screened for child safety. This should include reading the District 7910 Youth Protection Policy and Training PowerPoint as well as an Essex Eastern States Student Exchange background check. 
and for your information, an Essex waiver consent release form is included on the last page of this PowerPoint presentation. A completed form should be forwarded to the district youth chair, and I'm going to change that. Just follow the directions on the form, and it tells you to send that along to Essex. So I will change that in the slide. I overlooked that change. Uh, this is different from our first presentation of this webinar, where we talked about we were going to be using the Cori Check in Massachusetts. The Cori Check of Massachusetts is, is a sufficient background check, but it only covers any allegations that could have occurred uh, or any um, judgments that could have occurred in Massachusetts. The ethics waiver consent release form we're moving to uh, is a more inclusive that includes all of the states in the United States. So that's the one we're moving to, and that's the one that's on the last page of this program. Number four, avoid gossip and blame. Don't tell anyone about the report other than those required by the guidelines. Be careful to protect the rights of both the victim and the accused during an investigation. District 7910 maintains the privacy of any accused person. Next. Number five, do not challenge or contact the alleged offender. In cases of abuse, the interrogation must be left to law enforcement authorities. In cases of harassment, the district governor is responsible for follow through and will contact the alleged offender after the young person has been removed to a safe environment. The district governor may designate this task to a district youth protection officer or a district review committee. This is strictly for your information on who to call in case something happens. We've got the contact information for district governor Karen Gaffney, her cell number and her email address and my cell number and my email address in case anything happens. And, you, and you, or if you have any questions, don't be shy about calling me. I appreciate email questions and phone call questions as well to help people out. Next slide. Now we'll talk about the directive for the ethics application. The applicant should complete the ethics waiver consent release form, follow the directions on the bottom of the form. Applicants should include the following members of District 7910 Rotary Clubs. And again, we're narrowing this down a little bit. I think in our first presentation, we talked about all members being uh, background checked. We're narrowing that down a little bit uh, because there is a cost involved. We're talking about uh, anyone who is a club youth chair. If you are a club youth chair and you're responsible for youth programs that your club is involved with, you probably should have a background check. Club ethics chairs, they'll use a separate background form that we're not including here. Uh, club interact chairs should probably have a background check, definitely. And RILA people, RILA chairs should have a uh, a background check involved here. Interact advisors, Rotary member who is a liaison with the Interact Club, and that may be different from the club Interact Chair. They should be uh, take this ethics background check too. And also any Rotarian who participates at youth events on a regular basis should probably complete the ethics form and send it in. And again, if you have any questions, email me or call me at that phone number. Next. Here's a copy of the form. I apologize that it's crooked, but, but this is the form you would copy. And if you look at it, it's a, um, a waiver consent release form. It has all the legal information at the top. The important part is near the middle and the bottom. Your signature, clearly printing your legal name, the date, date of birth, social security, address, email, phone number. And on the bottom, uh, this is to be mailed to Carol Bronson at Essex with a check for $20 made out to Essex. 
And this, the, the payment of this can be decided at the club level. Some clubs that have the ability may pay, uh, but some clubs that don't have the ability may ask the Rotarian to send the check. That can be decided at the club level. The important thing is that with ethics, there is a $20 fee that needs to be included with the application. This gets mailed in, and then the information goes back to the applicant directly to them, and the district can get information from ethics on who has passed and who has not passed. But no form will come to me. No form will get social security number will be in my home, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, with all the with all of the uh, fraud stuff that's going on in the world, um, this this relieves us of that liability, and it makes all of the information flow through between the applicant and ethics. So this is why we moved to this uh, thing, as well as the fact that it includes more than just Massachusetts. So I think we've gone through all the slides. I think we're ready for questions. I see there are a few questions, Dick. Yeah, so what we're going to do to just make it a little bit easier for everybody is ask you to type your question into the chat box. The chat box can be found on the meeting control panel on the right-hand side. It's a little bubble, uh, and if you type your questions in there, we'll read them for everyone, and uh, Tony will respond. So if you have questions, go ahead. Tony must have done a good job. I'm not seeing any questions come in. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Right, just, make, just to make sure everybody's clear, I'm going to unmute everybody. If you have an issue, speak up, please. I have a question from Cheryl with the Equifax hack. If we freeze our credit records now, will this affect anything? I'm sorry, what was your question? With the Equifax hack, you know, the 143 million people or something like that, uh, if we freeze our credit records right now, will this affect anything? I don't think so because these background checks are going through the FBI, and I don't believe it has anything to do with your financials. It's really with your... Uh, legal um, issues that have occurred versus financial. I hope that answers. Not seeing any more, and not hearing anybody raise questions. I just want to mention that uh, the email that people yeah. received about the <clears throat> webinar. Including the PowerPoint. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, Tony, this is Karen Fusco. Um, my only question is, do you have to, if someone to send this waiver in, do they have to take this um, this webinar or class first to qualify, or or can someone from your club uh, send this in? The application. Yeah. Do you have to proceed it with a, a seminar, webinar, or education? Well, we've included a, a three-sided brochure in the, your email back that is yeah, pretty I much have that. very similar to the PowerPoint presentation. And uh, it would probably be good if people just listen to the recording. It's not that long before they right. mail it in, just so they have an idea what they're doing. Um, I don't think it has to be mandatory, but they should probably understand what they're doing and why. Um, I don't think it needs to be mandatory, but I think it's a good idea to sort of have an understanding of what you're finding. Okay. Thank you, Tony. That answers my question. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Real asks, will this be mandatory for Interact Advisors? I, I think it's I, – I would, I would say yes. Uh, if you're an Interact Advisor – um, you're with, you know, you're with students in high school student settings, and there are occasions where a Rotarian might be alone with one or two Interact students uh, in a meeting or doing some kind of an activity, and 
I think if, if, if someone comes to the Interact Advisor and says, you know, last time we met there was a man in the room and he said something to me that made me uncomfortable, and if you're the Interact Advisor and this person's confiding in you, I think it would be good that you know what to do about that, and I think the information in this webinar and having yourself uh, checked through the ethics uh, background check would be a smart thing to do. Yeah, I'd say it's mandatory for an Interact Advisor, yeah. I agree with Tony. It is Diana Nesrova. Uh, the Interact Advisors are interacting with uh, the students on a regular basis. So it is a good idea for both the Rotarian advisor and the students for their advisors to have the background check. Okay, Kathy Dupree asked a question. What is the local police department for district events? It would be the, uh, the police department where the event occurred. And that's not necessarily in the town of the Rotary Club. Depends. Okay. Jennifer Real asks, I'm a teacher and have a quarry check. Would this be a federal – this is a federal check, is that correct? Yeah, that's not the same. The quarry check that's done for teachers – I was a school principal for 18 years. The quarry check that's done for teachers is strictly for the um, school sort of umbrella. We're, we're in another domain here. We're in a rotary sort of umbrella. And this uh, – the check that we're asking for is – overarching and more encompassing than the quarry check done by the school district. Cheryl Rosen asked, our school wouldn't allow us to interview students without doing a quarry check on them. Would this cover everything and everywhere? Yeah, this should be okay. Yep. Yep. This should be this should be able, this should be able to replace a, a quarry check. As a matter of fact, it's better. It's better than a quarry check. Is there a fee and a deadline? The fee is twenty dollars, and there is no deadline. More questions? Tony, I'm not seeing any more. I'm not seeing okay. any more questions. I'm going to turn off recording, if that's okay for you, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to...